Hi everybody, I'm Margot True. I'm the food editor here at Sunset Magazine in Jack London Square in Oakland. And I'm in the kitchen with David Barron from Saltwood Kitchen and Oysterette in Monterey Bay, down, just down south of here. And this restaurant opened, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, we're just, like 18 days in about. Oh my now. gosh. <laughs> Today's 19, 19 days in today. 19 days. <laughs> and he has taken a break from a very busy schedule to come here and show us one of the key points of the restaurant, which is the, the oyster bar that occupies the center of the restaurant, right? Yeah, like right when you walk in, mm -hmm. oyster bar. Oyster bar. And then you have a dining room and you have a patio area. Yeah, so we have outside fire pits. We have a sunset deck so you can see, like, watch the sunset. We're nestled right on the uh, Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. So you could see like the sunset from like the deck and the oh. beach and all that stuff. It's really, really nice. So basically dreamy. Yeah. yeah. We also do like, we have rooms for like private events, mm -hmm. weddings, caterings, all that kind of stuff too. Really beautiful. Yeah. And it looks so peaceful and so stylish, this place. So David is here today to show us how to make three different toppings for oysters. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit about the oysters themselves? Yeah, for sure. So mm -hmm. I have... Um, Marina Miyagi's from Tamales Bay, California, and I have Kushis that are coming from uh, British Columbia. Mm -hmm. So these are small. These have a little bit deeper cup. Mm -hmm. Now, are both of these are Pacifics, right? Correct. They're they're classified as Pacifics. Yes. You know, almost all the oysters that we have on this coast are Pacifics, except for the native Olympia oyster. Yeah. Which basically died out. They're trying to bring it back, but it's what the size of a yeah, they're really a small. Dime, they're tiny. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, what are the flavor differences between these? So, um, the kushis are a little bit more like cleaner, cr uh, cleaner taste, uh, more um, like less solidity, mm -hmm. and the marin miyagi's have a little bit more briny flavor. Okay. Um, a little bit more like earthy notes as well. Mm -hmm. So how would that affect what you top them with? These could handle like a bigger boulder topping? Correct. So these okay. ones are the ones that I'm going to be cook, uh, roasting in the oven. Mm -hmm. They have a little bit of deeper cup and um, they'll be able to hold in the butter very well. These are like nicer for fresher preparations okay. like the apple or the Bloody Mary. Yes, he's going to take you through one by one these very exciting toppings. All of you who are sick of the shallot mignonette, get ready, because <laughs> your, your toppings are really kind of out of the world. So, um, so maybe we should start by shucking. Sure. Uh, for, for those of you guys who aren't really sure how to shuck an oyster, um, you're going to get a lesson right now. And by the way, if you have questions, please ask them, because here is your resource for all your oyster questions. So don't be shy. Ask them, and off camera, Nena will read them aloud, and, and the chef will answer. Okay. Right on. So oysters, they're all pretty, all oysters are very much the same. They're a bivalve, a mollusk. They have left or right or up and down. Um, you, op you open them from here. There's a, they're connected here and here in the valve. Mm -hmm. So you want to just get a, a towel to protect your hand. Okay. You don't want to stick the oyster knife to your hand. You I actually saw someone do that. <laughs> I've seen right, it. right before I shucked my first oyster, someone yeah. put the oyster knife through his hand. Yeah, one of my cooks, uh, <laughs> Christina. Hi, Christina. Um, she likes sticking oyster knives through her hand. So. Oh, great. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. So you just want to kind of like wedge it in here. Mm -hmm. You don't want to pop. It, uh, you don't want to shove it in, or you'll pop the stomach of the oyster. Ooh. Okay. So you kind of just want to like lightly get it in there. And it'll, you'll be able just to pry it right open, if you wow. notice. you did that so without effort. Yeah, the, there isn't no effort. You want to smell check each one. Okay. Just to, there's a smell that you'll know if you don't want to eat it or not. Does it's it like smell a, rotten? It or smells it... not good. Okay, so yeah. it's immediately obvious. It smells fresh, Oh, well, right? that smells wonderful. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm a big oyster fan. Oh, yeah. we have a question. We have, uh, we have two questions. Um, one of them is, what is the best knife to shop under $50? These are like eight bucks. This is a Dexter USA. You could also get like um, the Dexter, they have like plastic handle ones. They're like oyster knives are about five to fifteen dollars about. So, yeah. so not, I've never seen a fifty dollar oyster knife. Yeah, so, yeah. No, so no worries there. But you know, one thing I am noticing about your knife is that it has an extra long blade. 
yeah. you know, versus the ones that you typically see when you're out picnicking on the shore and you can pick up an oyster knife for a couple bucks. They're usually short and squat, and this is much nicer. Yeah, it's just kind of like gives you that flexibility. Mm -hmm. I like it a little bit more. Um, mm. Especially like when you're doing all different kinds of oysters. Uh huh. You could, um, like, sometimes you like scrape your knuckle or your hand because it's short and the, right. like, say, like, if you have like a Blue Point, which is like one of the more iconic oysters in the world, mm -hmm. they're kind of large. So when you're, you're sh they, they're easy to open, but when you scrape, you're kind of like scraping this way. So you, if your knife is only that short, you're. Yeah. E so exactly. then, yeah, you just scoop that second valve and s mm -hmm. flip it over. Okay, now. Pretty basic. So after you've popped the. The, the end point like that. Yeah. You're sliding your knife yeah. under the shell. Correct. Just okay. right on the top layer. Just right against it. Uh huh. Correct. And then you're doing a little flip maneuver yep. there. Just. Okay. So you're you're simultaneously cutting the muscle cutting underneath. Cutting it and flipping it. Yeah. And flipping it over. Pretty basic. Okay. The um, you don't have to uh, flip it, mm -hmm. but you de you definitely want to cut it. Because when you go to, like, say like, you could do that and just leave it like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of, like, looks cleaner. It looks like... Like nothing ever happened to it. Yeah, like nothing it. ever happened to it. But when you eat it, you can still shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen too many people at cocktail parties like, <laughs> they are trying to scrape that poor little thing off its shell with their teeth. And it's so messy. And it's so, you know, you feel sort of embarrassed because here you are with a half oyster hanging out your mouth. And, <laughs> all on your, you know, all on your chin. It's, it's not nice, especially with a topping. We have another question. We do. So one, I'm not sure if we have any recommendations if someone was checking if there's any great spots in Portland to get fresh oysters. I would suggest going to your local wholesale fish um, area, like if they have a commercial wharf, um, Asian supermarkets, some of the higher end supermarkets that have a good seafood selection. Um, I've never been to Portland, totally on my list <laughs> to go to. Ah, uh, you but, love Portland. Yeah, like if like where we live in the Monterey Peninsula, um, you could go down to like the commercial wharf and they have like all seafood stands and stuff where you could buy like anything like off the boats or like fresh catch kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of fortunate to have that. I'm sure Portland has that too. Right? Oh yes. And and there are there are some fantastic restaurants in Portland with very good oyster selections and we'll post those in the comments section for you guys. Yeah, so wow, you're really, you're shucking a lot of these. Well, you do have three toppings, so. Yeah, I need yeah. to have at least enough for us to eat, right? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to be an oyster fiend. I love oysters, so this is, this is a real yeah, treat. Yeah, you really got to be careful um, when you're shucking it, because if you put too much like leverage or pressure, you'll snap the oyster knife. Really? Yeah, it's happened before. Oh. I snapped the... Um, one of my old chef Evan's uh, oyster knife one time. Oh dear. And he got it from one of his chefs. Oh. Yeah. So, so I, that was a historic knife. That yeah. you, that you <laughs> exactly. Snapped. So I went and bought him one of the fancy oyster knives from Sir Latab. Uh huh. And um, he was like, hey, dude, I'll shuck your oysters for the day. And then <laughs> shuck this finger. Oh, gosh, that's, that's really unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I was like, oh man, yeah. I broke your knife. And then. You went to do my oyster, so they bought you a new one, and then you shucked your own finger. Oh, dear. Because the thing about jabbing yourself with an oyster knife, if this ever happens to you, um, you know, it's, it may not seem like a big deal, even though it hurts, but honestly, it's a live animal. Sorry to say, it's alive. Um, you won't know it's alive because it calms down before you eat it, but um, not that it's flipping around anyway. But because it's a living animal, you technically need to get a tetanus shot if you poke yourself with an oyster knife. Did he get a tetanus shot? I believe so, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, and actually, before we went on camera, you were telling me a funny story about the first time you were asked to shuck oysters at a restaurant. And, um, yeah, I was like trying to save Patty uh, from uh, Chicago, and she, she was like... This was at Aqua. This was at right? Aqua in San Francisco. like. Fancy restaurant. Yeah, it was really nice. It's not there mm -hmm. anymore. It's like where the Michael Mina restaurant is now like right. on California Street. And um, yeah, I was just trying to help her. I didn't know how to shuck an oyster. They threw me on her station. And she was like, cool. Hey, shuck the oyster. And uh, I and went it, and grabbed the wrong knife and was like, how do I do this? And she was like, no, 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 Papa. Like, What were you using, not, like a butter knife? It was like her parrying knife. Oh. <laughs> Bad idea. Really not good. Yeah. yeah. I've learned a lot about oysters since yeah. then. But, uh, but you were game. 
and here you are. Shucking oysters. Shucking yeah. oysters. But how did you come to want to open an oyster-centric restaurant? Did, did the love of oysters just take you over, or how did, how did this restaurant well, come about? Well, our restaurant is settled right on the beach mm -hmm. um, in California, so you would, like, if you're sitting at the restaurant, you could see the fishing boats going by, mm -hmm. you could see, um, you know, like, everything's, you know, very much based off local seafood in our area. There's fishermen, there's harpoon guys, there's surf, you know, people are on the mm -hmm. beach fishing. Like, if you walk down to our beach where our restaurant is, there's people every day fishing down there, like, for striped bass and fishing in the surf. Yeah. So it's like you would imagine that like if you have a restaurant right on the beach, what would you think you would sell? Yeah. Oh, and, and actually, uh, we question. Have a question for they're wondering about the best wine to pair or maybe a sake. So any recommendations? Ah. Yes, because you have an extensive beverage list to pair with oysters at the restaurant. Totally. You? Yeah. Our um, beverage program is focused on like local wines and beers. A lot of people really like pairing um, champagnes and those kind of things with oysters. Mm -hmm. I think with the kind of toppings that we have and different um, experiences, you could go cocktail, you could go beers, no problem. Like, yeah, and actually, we have decided today, well, I have decided because we happen to have them here at sunset, <laughs> we're going to pair um, the chef's toppings and oysters today with beer. So you'll uh, hang tight till the end and you'll see what we do. I'm excited yeah. for that. Yeah, I am too. I like beer. We haven't actually tried it with the oysters yet, but we think it's going to work, so we'll see. All right, I have enough right. oysters. Okay, and I'll bring you your first uh, set uh, of sweet. topping stuff. I'm going to keep those in the fridge for now, yeah? Yes, thank you. Keep them nice and cold. All right, so what we have here is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, green apple which is juice, I'm oh, sorry, green apple juice, and finger limes. Finger limes, Can yeah. Can you talk about these? So finger bit? limes are a, um, it's like a fruit that hangs from like a shrub. They're like native of like New Zealand, Australia, and those kind of places. Mm -hmm. We're actually fortunate enough for uh, these ones to grow in Santa Barbara. Oh, neat. At Saltwood, we're, our wine and our food is kind of coming so from like, like Napa this. to Santa Barbara is kind of like our appellation that we're kind of focusing on. Uh huh. And um, we're lucky enough to have these from Santa Barbara, so we're allowed to use them at our restaurant. Wow, and they're, they're so cool because instead of being like, you know, the flesh of a lime, it, it's got all of these, what, little caviar-like products. Yeah, the little you cells. You see that? I'm squishing it. So you can see them coming out. Yeah. Yeah. And they kind of crunch in your mouth. Yeah, they, 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 they kind of pop. Mm -hmm. So at the restaurant, we use those mm -hmm. for our... Um, we use those for our... Um, <laughs> garnish. Okay. Um, if you're at home and you can't find finger limes, what um, I suggest you could do is you could take uh, um, both lemons and limes, and you do these things that are called suprems. So you just kind of like peel your lemon... Mm or your lime from the peel. Yeah, or orange or grapefruit. Orange, grapefruit, any kind of citrus. Yeah. And then you just take these guys, you just pop them right out. Just cutting between the membranes. Correct, right? yeah, they just, yeah. they pop right out. You just mm -hmm. go down and just dig up and they just pop right out. So mm. then you just, so you kind of get the same, you'll, you'll uh, get a similar kind of burst mm -hmm. in, your, uh, in your oyster. Okay, so just straight up lime. Lime or lemon. Or lemon. Yeah. Okay. So. Nice. Pretty, you know, it's an it's a easy garnish to have mm -hmm. for at home, like no problem. So what I'm doing here is I am heating up the, um, the juice of apple. We use uh, green, uh, green, green apple juice. So you just heat it up, bring it up to boil. I'm using a powdered gelatin. It's one package of gelatin uh, mm -hmm. for every one cup of uh, juice. Now at the restaurant, you were saying you use gelatin sheets. Correct. And why a sheet and where do you get sheets? So we get them from like um, our chef distributors, like Chef's Warehouse um, kind of companies. Mm -hmm. I don't really know if even if you could buy gelatin sheets in stores. Yeah, you may be able to order them online. Yeah, for uh, sure. It, we'll, we'll figure that out and if we find a source, we'll post it too. Yeah, so pretty much you just want to heat up your juice when you're doing it this way. When you're doing gelatin sheets, 
-hmm. you're going to heat up a little bit of your juice and then you're going to um, bloom your gelatin in a little bit of ice water so this way you just heat it up and you um, stir it into all the way till it's dissolved like jello yeah. so with the gelatin sheet you bloom it in cold water but then you put it in the hot yeah you juice. put it in a warm liquid so it could dissolve okay and then um, you'll pour the rest of your juice after that okay cool mm -hmm. yeah then this will just set in the fridge um, to set like jello so it could take a few hours right and why green apple? Are you you're just looking for that kind of high acidity? Yeah, this? you kind of want like that acidity, that that um, that tartness right, from right. it. You know, I don't know who invented it, but apples and oysters go very, very, very well together. It's kind of like the chicken and the egg thing. Uh huh. Uh. Like I don't know, just, they just really, really work. Apples, oysters, and lime to kind of yeah. stretch it in that direction. And then the third ingredient in this, can I bring it out? Is it too soon? We, to bring out the tarragon? Tarragon? No. It's all yeah. Good. So those of you who are not familiar with tarragon or don't use it very much, it's just such a great it's herb. It's just like tarragon. It's a type of yeah. a soft herb. Yeah. Very popular in France, you yeah. know. Um, so, it, yeah, it's... Uh, it wasn't available in this country very readily until like a few decades ago. So, Crazy, right? Mm -hmm. It's so good. Mm. It's like summertime in France, this herb. And it, too, goes really well with oysters. Yeah, so once everything's dissolved, mm. I'm just going to set it in the fridge and let it chill. Okay. It, if you really want to hurry up, you can set it over like a double ice bath. Okay. Um, but for gelatin, it takes a little bit to set. Okay. We're live. Yeah. All right. So, so, so well magic that, of TV, right? <laughs> yeah. So I have already have a bag set for us. So... It's, um, this is the green apple gel. Ah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Just like green apples, huh? Yeah, it does. Now, the texture, it's, it's interesting, you know, your choice to gelatinize it versus just having a little dribble of juice or apple syrup. Totally. And I can see how it kind of mimics the viscosity of the oyster a little bit. Totally. So it it's soft and then, like... When oysters, some people just take them as shots, but when you chew through them, you mm -hmm. get all these little textural excitements. Yeah. So some people are like, oh, I don't like the texture, so they just eat it. Then what was the point? Right, right. So you're just swallowing at this point. Yeah, you know, if you, I know that if you're a new oyster lover, you may want to start out by just swallowing them whole. <laughs> <laughs> but once you really get into it, you enjoy the chewing You enjoy experience. eating them. Like, yeah, you're eating you do. them, right? You do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have this set ready. Okay. Should we do Great. the other one and we'll plate them all up at the same time? Sure. Later? And would you like to hang on to this or? or yeah, I'll keep this just, and this. Okay. And this. All right. I'll move this over. So now we're going to do something involving vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Haha. It's always fun to have oysters and a bit of booze. But this actually, this is such a clever idea. It's um, inspired by a Bloody Mary, right? Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we try to take all the same ingredients um, that come in a Bloody Mary cocktail and just put that into the oyster. So vodka, pickles, celery. So I have cornichons. I have some pickled shallot. Um, you could use like pearl onions or anything like that. I just pickled some shallot here, just mm -hmm. di diced it up. Uh, mm -hmm. Some celery and radish. Mm -hmm. Wish dear sauce. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and fresh horseradish. Mm. So. Yeah. yeah, this is a, if you guys are used to buying the prepared horseradish uh, in the jar, what would you say are the advantages of using this versus? Um, it's fresh. It has like a little bit more of like that heat. The prepared mm -hmm. horseradish is kind of like, this, it's kind of like getting orange juice. Like when you squeeze it fresh out of mm -hmm. an orange or buying like not mm -hmm. processed orange juice, mm -hmm. it's just a totally different flavor. Yeah. So. And not as sour. Because there's At no all. vinegar yeah. in this it. This is just yeah. straight up horseradish, so it gives you a nice little pepper note. What's up? Yeah. Have a question. Yes. We were wondering if uh, you guys have a favorite vodka that you like to use. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> we don't have it here today. Yeah, we don't have but... it here today, but here locally we, they have um, Hangar One from St. George Distillery. Um, I also like Ocean Vodka. It comes from Hawaii. It's made out of potatoes. It's organic. 
Hmm. Um, and Sobieski also is one of my favorite vodkas. Okay. The one we have today is made with American grain. Sadly, it is not local. So yeah. thank you, thank you yeah. for those recommendations. One of my boys, Joshi, baby at work, um, <laughs> he'll highly tell me that Stoli is the only vodka in the world. But, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I have all these toppings. We're just going to mix them all together. <clears throat> so I have uh, the recipe will be in the comments. So pickle shallot, the um, celery, and the radish. Mm. Chef, I cannot help but admire your impeccable knife skills. And this seems like a good moment to ask you a little bit about your background and uh, where you've cooked. And Yeah, I've worked at a lot of different restaurants uh -huh. um, growing up. Uh, I worked at Aqua, like as we just mentioned. Right. Um, I used to work for a restaurant called Qua in San Francisco. Very famous. Um, I worked at Atelier Karen. Sure. I worked at Encanto. Mm -hmm. I worked at La Bouille in um, Savoie, France. Like, oh, okay. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Cool experience. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I worked a lot of different places. Um, just moved out to the Monterey Peninsula about five years ago. You know, okay. I have like kids and the wife and all that fun stuff. So, <laughs> it seems like a cooler place to raise a family. Right. Um, that's where Saltwood comes in. Right. You know, we have a very neighborhood restaurant, uh, very local. We're feeding um, our locals our uh, working people, our foodies, mm -hmm. our luxury travelers, mm -hmm. our families that are coming in, traveling. Um, we're kind of like the gateway to the peninsula coming to the Monterey area. We're the first yeah. stop, so it's kind of like I wouldn't see why you wouldn't come. Yeah, I, I don't either, especially since you know this is a really great addition to that area. They kind of need you. Not that there aren't some good restaurants there, but there aren't enough good restaurants there. So There are a lot of different restaurants. Yeah, a lot I'm of different ones. I'm gonna one of these bowls real quick. Oh, That's sure. Yeah, me Oops. need one. So, so um, yeah, there's like tons and tons and tons of restaurants in our community, mm -hmm. but um, there's also a lot, a lot, a lot of farms. Like if you just drove mm -hmm. to our restaurant, driving through, you're gonna see um, artichoke fields, lettuce fields, people mm -hmm. picking berries. You're gonna see all that fun stuff happening and uh, I wouldn't see why you wouldn't um, why you wouldn't uh, just capitalize use that on stuff. It, yeah. yeah, it's like mm -hmm. you have all the best stuff in the world, and we should probably use it. Yeah. So we're really fortunate to have like the local fisheries, good partnerships with the abalone company, mm -hmm. our fishermen and our meat guys. Like even our meats coming from the Central Valley of California. Mm. So yeah, everything's like super traced and really really awesome program. Oh, that's that's good to hear. And, you know, being right above the Monterey Bay Aquarium, too, it kind of goes hand in hand with the sustainability efforts of the Monterey Bay Aquarium and their whole seafood program. And Yeah, you know, totally. So. so I got one of my boy Dick Swank's tomatoes, Swank Farms, Hollister, California. He makes really, really nice tomatoes. So I'm just going to fire roast this one. Um, if you have a grill, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Here, we're just going to do it straight on the stove. So... I just kind of want to blister it and get like a little bit of that charred flavor. Yeah. You know, and while you're doing that, if, if, if I may not distract you too much, but I wanted to ask you about your knife. Um, I know people are getting more, the home cook is getting more and more interested in really high quality, great chef level knives, knives yeah. more and more. Could you talk a little bit about your knife? Yeah, so this is like a pretty basic knife. Um, Jap yeah. yeah, it's a Japanese knife. I've had it probably, I got it when I was working at Kwa. Uh -huh. So I've had it for at least like eight years maybe. Mm -hmm. So um, it used to be like this big oh, and like that long. Mm -hmm. But as you use it and you sharpen it, as you could tell, it kind of just like wears down. Yeah. So as long as you maintain your knives and sharpen them and um, don't like open cans with them and stuff like that, um, they last you forever. Or oysters. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, so it's a huge investment um, to buy a knife. I think this one's probably maybe like less than $200 maybe. Hmm. So, but it's lasted me several years. So, you know, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like on a $12 a year plan on this one. <laughs> it's and a pretty good, it's a dollar a month. What is the brand? This is a Togiharu. Togiharu. Yeah. Togiharu. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a pretty basic kitchen mm -hmm. knife. And where can one find them? I would go on like, like I think I got this one from online at Corin. 
Okay. Um, dot com. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a pretty sweet place to buy knife. There's also all these like cool little like knife shops if you're in San Francisco, like Bernal Cutlery or Town Cutler and right. those kind of places. So now it's more accessible for the cooks to get. Um, it's more accessible for cooks to get their um, knives all over the place because there's stores for them now. Like long mm -hmm. time ago, we didn't have like YouTube or. Facebook or right. any kind of like Amazon delivery kind of stuff. It was like Amazon you, delivery. Yeah, you know, like everything was like that available. Yeah. So I just like kind of get it like a little bit fiery, mm -hmm. and um, you could pulse it in your Roboku, but we're just gonna. Since it's just one tomato. Yeah, we're just gonna chop well. it up. Especially since you have such a good knife. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not use it? And. Uh, and what about those those cooking tongs? I, I I think that's another tool that's starting to cross over a little more. Yeah, they're just so. like basic forceps. Mm -hmm. oh. You could buy them like at like Kamai um, in San Francisco. There's uh -huh. like a store called Kamai, and they sell like all these like little tools, like tweezers, this this microplane. You could buy like Serlotov, Macy's. Yes, those um, are. Those they're are. very standard at this point. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty. I'm guessing in the next few years you'll be able to buy forceps, tweezers, oyster mm -hmm. knives, like at the grocery store, uh -huh. or like at your fancy, mm -hmm. at your fancy places. Right. So. And actually, we have another question. What's yeah, up? We've got a couple questions. All right, so let's do it. One is how many oysters would you recommend per person for a tasting party? For a party, I would mm -hmm. probably go minimum of four, maybe. It, it also depends how many toppings. Some people will try them, some people won't. Uh, for the most part, um, if people like them, they kind of just hang out around the grill. Like last night, we did a, at our resort, we have like uh, cauldrons and beach bonfires and all that stuff, like a private beach area. Hmm. So we do like caterings at the beach for people. So. Um, I think I know where I'm going to be next weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like we do like caterings at the beach for people. So we do like, we, they, they could rent us out, like they rent out the cauldron and we come prepare a bunch of oysters. Last night there was a gentleman who was just like, like blocking everyone, just like cracking all the oysters. So like, if you like them, you like them, you know? Mm -hmm. It's kind of one of those things. Yeah. And then the other question? Yeah, so they wanted to hear again the brand of knife that you're using and they're wondering if you sharpen them yourself and is there any recommendations on how folks can sharpen at home? And take yeah, totally. Time? So it's Good a question. Togaharu. I believe. It's Japanese, so I don't know how to read it, and it's so old, but I'm pretty uh -huh. sure that's the name of the brand. Togaharu. I believe so. Okay. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's so old, yeah, but... If, if any of you guys uh, watching can read Japanese... I'm pretty sure it's what it is, though. Let us and know. Um, I do sharpen them myself. I use, like, whetstones. Uh, you could buy them online, same like at Chef's Knives to Go or Corin or one of those kind of websites. Mm -hmm. I use a 1,000, 3,000, and 6,000. And it's just like it's just just a grid of stone. Um, I you could watch videos on YouTube how to sharpen knives. You can go to like Sir La Tab, they do like knife sharpening demos and stuff like that. There, you kind of want to stay away from your tackle box thing. Oh like, yeah. You know, like that thing that people have in their tackle box. A yeah, lot you of know, people. There's two little grinder things. That... <laughs> you know, like they kind of. Yeah. yeah you don't want to put that on your knife. Yeah. Totally don't want to put that on your knife. So. Oh. Yeah. So I have my stuff for my Bloody Mary, my mignonette, tomatoes, horseradish. All right, here we go. Okay, are we ready for kimchi the, butter? The kimchi butter. Oh, all right. Coming up. Oh. Okay, this this I think is going to go really well with beer. I'm just guessing. Totally. So this is um, lap chong. It's a Chinese sausage. It's kind of sweet. So I'm just going to render it out a little bit. So I already have some cut up here, just diced up. I'm just going to render it out a little bit just to get some of like some of the grease coming out. It'd be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then I have some uh, room temperature butter. I have kimchi. Mm -hmm. And I have some scallions that I already cut up. And really, you could just use any favorite kimchi, right? Correct, yeah. Okay. You can make it yourself or you could cut it up. Totally fine. So for the scallion, 
you're just gonna um, take off like the top part and you just want to get like some nice little pieces off it. Mm -hmm. Again, a really sharp knife is kind of critical to... Yeah, you definitely want to make sure to make full cuts. You don't want to like smash, mm -hmm. you know, because you'll bruise your, your um, scallion. Yeah. But if you just kind of like tear right through it, you'll be fine. So, pretty yeah. basic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, I'm going to just check that our broiler is on. All right. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna be making oysters here very very soon. Yeah. And um, if you guys are just joining us too, I'm Margot True. I'm the food editor here at Sunset Magazine and David Barron. And David Barron from Saltwood Kitchen and Oysterette on the Monterey Bay Peninsula. Marina, California. In Marina, yes, <laughs> right above Monterey. Yeah. And we're in the Sunset Test Kitchen in Oakland, in Jack London Square, and. Um, the chef is showing us how to make three different toppings for really good quality oysters. And these, these recipes are ones that you also serve at the restaurant, right? Correct, yeah. Okay. You could come, you could sit around the fire, you could talk to the chefs and they'll just cook right mm -hmm. in front of you, making a whole bunch of oysters. So you don't really want to cook it, you just want to kind of get it nice and... Because it's completely cooked already. Yeah, it's already like a cured sausage. You don't even have to store them in the refrigerator. Yeah, we just bought these at room temperature right up the street from us uh, here in Oakland. Yeah, they have a great Chinatown here. Great Chinatown. Yeah. So, you're just gonna, um, I'm gonna use my hand because that's gonna be the way to go right now. Yeah. And of course his hands, his hands are impeccably clean, so. I just washed them like 17 yes. times. <laughs> and it's kind of fun to feel your food. I always feel like any excuse you can get to actually feel your food, you should. Yeah, so all you want to do is kind of like squeeze you the... Um, oh my god, that looks so fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> smells good too. Yeah, so you just want to mix it up. Mm -hmm. So that you could have your... Um, so right now that's just kimchi, lop chong, the Chinese sausage, and butter. Yeah, correct. Okay. And that way, you know, with your hands, you can kind of feel when there's a big glob of butter hanging out unmixed. And yeah, you want to like kind of like go through it. What we do at the mm -hmm. restaurant is we'll put a bunch of it in the mixer. Okay. We'll make a big batch, and then mm -hmm. we make a roulade, like a torchons out of it, which we just make like like little logs. tubes. Yeah, yeah, and then we just put them in the freezer mm -hmm. um, to hold them, and we just cut them in coins, and then you just put one coin in each oyster as we. Um, you know, for service, you just have a yeah. bunch of coins in your uh, mise en place. And That's then, a good tip for a dinner party. You could just do this ahead. How, how far ahead could you make the butter? Oh, I, <laughs> it's frozen. So, uh -huh. um, like at home, I have one of these that I made, like, April. Okay. Yeah, as long as you keep them wrapped and nice, mm -hmm. you're good. So, All right. bang, bang. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to put this in the fridge to kind of, like, let it recongeal a little bit. Mm-hmm. Good. It's probably colder on top, yeah? Yeah, probably so. So, excellent. And I'll clear this away for you. And I think the broiler seemed like it was just about ready to go. All so right, we're ready to make started. some oysters here. And you guys, if you have any oyster-loving friends, share this link with them right now. And, uh, you know, because they could probably use this. You know, And you, you can see how easy these recipes are. You could be eating oysters like tonight with one of these one of these toppings so and maybe if you share it with a friend they'll they'll invite you over <laughs> <laughs> very good chance of that huh uh, all right let's get rid okay. of this guy oysters so we're gonna start we'll start by setting these guys up mm -hmm. and look, look how nice this is a, a nice little gratin dish with rock salt which gets hot, but it doesn't melt because it's so coarse and salt doesn't melt anyway, um, unless it's, well, very finely, finely ground. So this will keep the oysters steady. Cool. Yeah, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do the Marin Miyagi's in this one. Mm -hmm. So we just have to... Because basically you're trying to preserve all those nice juices in the oyster, right? For sure, Which and is... they're pretty juicy. Yeah. All right, let's see. If you were to set them on a flat surface, they'd tip and all that lovely liquid, liquor is what it's called, would spill right out. Yeah. That is correct. And then for these ones, I'm going to uh, 
do them with ice. Mm -hmm. I have some ice down here. Yeah. Big tray full of crushed ice. That's, that's the other thing you'd want to have on hand. Good crushed ice for an oyster party. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Mm. All right. So I'll just set these in here like this. Lovely. And if you're having, um, we're at the restaurant, do you have little signs that identify each type of oyster or you just explain it to the guests uh, on an individual basis as they, yeah, as they um, ask? Yeah. So the way that it works is we have like a menu mm -hmm. and they could choose from their experiences on what they want to have. Like if they want to have hot, cold, with toppings, plain, lemon horseradish, basic mm -hmm. mignonette, cocktail sauce. Okay. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Many different so, ways to eat oysters yeah, totally. at your place. And also it looks like you do a whole range of other seafood too. You have Dungeness crab, you have grilled fish. Yeah, we do grilled whole fish every day. So what, nice. whatever the fishermen bring us mm -hmm. is what we cook that day. Right now we're currently selling some uh, local rock cods. They're yeah. about three pounds. They're good for two people. Mm. And uh, they come with your choice of sides, nice uh, shaved vegetable salad, um, like a citrus sauce. Mm. Yeah, so I'm just loading these up wow. with a little bit of the butter in each one. You want to make sure to get like some of that sausage in there. Like, yeah. So. Yeah, oysters do so well with meaty things, you know. It's totally. Uh, so, bang, bang. Yeah. So those could go in the oven. Okay, may I put them in for you? Yeah, I get okay. it. Okay. Yeah. I'm putting them about probably three inches under the heating element, if that sounds all right. Sweet. Okay. So same thing here. So we'll do like these guys, Bloody Mary, and then the other guys, Apple. Okay. I think I want these ones to be Bloody Mary and these ones to be Apple. Okay. You get to do whatever you want, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so same thing. Um, you get a little bit of uh, this stuff. I'm going to put a little bit of this roasted tomato in there. Oh, so pretty. So you can use any color of tomato you want. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Like right now is like tomato season, so you could yeah. kind of like um, user's mm -hmm. choice. Mm -hmm. Will your toppings vary by season yes. at the restaurant? Yeah, so well, we want to do complete food ideas oh. with, every, uh, with, with every dish. So. Whether, um, whether it's um, an oyster or the mm -hmm. um, milkshake, you're kind of like thinking about it, like, huh, okay, I wanna yeah. kind of so, wanna do that. So what's your milkshake? We're working on it right now. We're trying to um, do one of those fancy milkshakes with like booze in it. Oh, nice. That hopefully will be coming out next week. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's like our second <laughs> phase of like, you know, like we wanna make fun stuff. We wanna make stuff that people wanna eat. Um, mm -hmm. Every day, on a special occasion, when they're hanging out with their wife and girlfriend or family, or when they just want to watch the game mm -hmm. um, and hang out with their boys, or by themselves yeah. on a business trip. Yeah. So you kind of want to make that kind of food that like people just want to eat. Right. Like and no fuss to it. And it sounds as though the different areas of your restaurant. Ah, here's the. Yeah. So they need the to final. Some. The final topping. Yeah, you just grate some horseradish on there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that smells great. Sweet. Mm. Got that? Mm-hmm. All right. Then we have the apple gel. So just a little bit of apple gel in each one. Mm-hmm. You could just scoop it straight out of the bowl, but right. I put it in the bag. It's a little, a little bit. more control, right? Yeah, for sure. And then you have your finger limes. Yeah. You could just squeeze those guys right into there. You want to put a decent amount of this because like, that's where all like, the excitement comes from. God, that is so fun. Yeah. It's like they were made to be squeezed. I think so. <laughs> just, how did it, These were just discovered in New Zealand, Australia? I or believe these so. are the result of years and years of tinkering? I think, no, I think it's like one of those things like, you know, like tamarind. Like, you, who, who knew that that pod had held so much awesome flavor? Right, right. right? It's just like, look, it's like this thing. Like, what is that? Uh -huh. Tamarind, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's super good. It is. Yeah. I'll check your oysters for you just right to be on. sure. Ooh, they're looking pretty 
Well, are they look kind of brownie? They're bubbling, and I think they could go for mm. one more second. So nice, yeah. I'm so then gonna... I just like lightly tear some tarragon on there, uh -huh. and that's just gonna give us a little bit of an earthy note, like the herbs. You'll notice when you come to salt with it, we like herbs a lot. Mm. So it's pretty basic, you know. Lovely. Now I'm gonna get these out of here. All right, sister. All right. Oh, they look so good. Oh, yum. What do you think? Done enough? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or do, if you like them crustier, I can pop them back. No, nah, well, like there's no bread or nothing. So okay. you want to get a nice helping of scallions on there. Mm -hmm. um, you get like that nice onion flavor. Oh, man. <sighs> you well, while you're doing that, I'm going to crack open a couple beers. Oh, yeah. And try. I like beers a lot. Mm. It's my kind of my thing. <laughs> All okay. Right. Sweet. Now, here we have a heater, Alan Pilsner, a really refreshing kind of, you know, not, not too high alcohol Pilsner from the Willamette Valley in Oregon. And this, I'm going to mangle the pronunciation as Brewery Terre, um, Earth Brewery, I suppose. And even though it sounds French, it's actually local to uh, Placentia, California. So we are staying in the West with our beers. Uh, this is a Cezanne, Pilsner, as I said, Cezanne. And Cezanne is a type of Belgian-style farmhouse ale that is very foamy, typically, and also has a lot of complexity and kind of this earthy, dry finish. And um, Let's give it a go. Yeah, let's try it out. Okay. Ooh, fast, huh? Well, I'm, I'm eager. <laughs> <laughs> this just looks so great. Ooh. All right. Good catch. Yeah. David Carey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, shall I pour one and you pour yeah, the other? And we'll see, we'll see which we like best. All right. Yeah. Saisons have the ability to handle a whole wide range of flavors. It's a good Thanksgiving Thanksgiving beer, for instance, because um, you can throw anything at it from mashed potatoes to cranberry sauce, and it will still stand tall. So, <laughs> all right. Right on, sister. What yeah. Do wanna, oh, how do you yes. want to do this? I I'm going to follow your lead since you you guide people every day. Yeah. We'll map oh, for you. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going for that one. Looks really good. Okay. I'm going for this one. <laughs> and, and I'll go for its neighbor. All right, I'll cheers. Okay, cheers. Mmm. That was so fun. It was delicious. You like the tarragon? Oh, yeah. The tarragon just kind of knits the whole thing together. Yeah. Like you get that like first and last. Mm -hmm. like, that's really important, like the progression of the bite. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's so much going on in this. Yeah. Texture-wise, flavor-wise. Try a Bloody Mary one. Okay. All right, let's go for it. I have to have a little sip of V. This is the Pilsner. Yeah. And this is, this is the Cezanne. All right. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. Cheers. Cheers. You didn't even cheers me. Mm. Cheers. We're just, we're just like... <laughs> so distracted. All right. Hmm. That's good. Wow, both of these are amazing. Heather Lynn Oregon. Mm hmm. Sweet. Heather Allen. Yep. All right, I'm going for right. Bloody Mary. I, I, I want this one. Things stacked, huh? Yeah. These are just lovely little oysters, I, these I don't kishus. Mind. Yeah, kushis are one of my favorite. I mean kushi. There's a kishu tangerine, which is also small, delicate, and plump. So, interesting. Mmm. These are great. I'm going to be down there next weekend. I hope so. At your restaurant. These are just really fine. That's really delicious, right? It is. That's good. Yeah, I'm liking this with the Cezanne, actually. And I think because of the, the sort of the mouth-filling foam. You're right. And it has a little bit more, like, notes to it. Mm -hmm. like it's got the all lager. these layers in that yeah. beer. That's amazing. This guy's going to be good with this one. 
I have the feeling. I think so too. All right. Oh God, it's so buttery. Mmm, sippable oyster. Oh my God, that is delicious. That is really good. You know, it's, it's kind of reminding me, like it has some sort of a relation to Oysters Rockefeller in that it has sort of bacony. you know, you've got the lop chung instead of the bacon. But it's so much more exciting, mm -hmm. I think. That's cool, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. So much fun. <laughs> That's cool, right? So at your next really party, cool. instead of everyone sitting around the barbecue grill yeah. with a big old giant box of oysters, uh -huh. waiting around for one to open to put your Tabasco sauce in it. Yeah. It takes about the same amount of time. Right, and just have some of these things ready and make it more exciting. So, Chef, thank you so much for thank coming today. Thank you for today. having me. Mm, Appreciate it. My, my sincere pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> now I get to eat all of these. <laughs> Lucky lady. Thank <laughs> you.